So my name's Anna Lewis and I am the manager for the CMHA Healthy Harvest Farm. So this site here, we share with the who purchases it. We've been leasing, we've got about an acre that we lease and we share the greenhouse as well. Um, and we've been here now, I think they've been here seven years. So, and it's a constant um, work. <laughs> like we've been expanding some that have been here before. We'll see how much work we've done in the last year and a half. Um, and so kind of the mandate of the program and the farm that, that I run is to create a low stress environment where people that are diagnosed with a mental illness can come and work, create community and just, you know, feed themselves and learn about that whole, whole process. And for me, that, that idea of actually nurturing something can translate into self-care, which is positive for everyone. And we have a bunch of community volunteers that come out. They know I'm here typically nine to one, Monday to Friday. Um, I've got all kinds of people that just are like, hey, what can I do? Because they're a lot happier when they're outside and getting their hands dirty. And there's all kinds of papers in terms of the therapeutic um, value of, you know, playing in dirt. <laughs> Yeah. Um, I'll quickly introduce Marcus, or Marcus can introduce himself, actually. <laughs> I think I saw um, a bunch of you at the last workshop, so I am helping put on the Grow Local program as well with uh, Anna and Heather. Um, and so I'm representing Transition Towns. It's a partnership between the ACRD and Transition Towns. That's who went together to do this project. And so you'll be seeing me around at most of the activities. And if you, I'm sure you must all know about the different events that are coming up, but this is only the second one in a series of events. There's going to be two more here this year. Yeah. Next year we're going to be doing a series of events too that um, may be different than the ones we do this year. Currently they're, they're looking somewhat similar but I think that we'll probably reevaluate. Um, we also have um, garden tour events that are going to happen out in Yuclu and Tofino this summer that will be uh, published just in case you wanted to make a trip and then also do um, go out there to tr travel around to the gardens that are out there and we're going to do a full day edible garden tour here in town so we're gonna go around and see people who are using their backyards not just for um, beautiful kind of growing flowers and stuff which is awesome but who are trying to uh, utilize their space for food production so that's gonna happen later in the summer I don't have the dates on it right now but you will see it posted well in advance because we picked the day already and The first thing you think about, you get this lovely like West Coast seeds or Johnny seed catalogs and you start flipping through it and you go, <coughs> oh this is so exciting, <laughs> this looks great and, and you just get overwhelmed with how many choices are out there. Did a little bit on you know how to navigate an actual seed catalog. So one of the first things you want to do is you want something that is a seed company that's actually in your area because when they do their descriptions of their seeds and their plants and what grows well they may be talking about like oh we're in Fiji and yes. <laughs> our average temperature is this we live on the west coast and like this year it's the wet coast and things are a little behind right so when you're looking at even who you're gonna buy your seeds from keep that in mind because you'd like someone that's local. We've got West Coast seeds, Salt Spring Island seeds. We've got our Omega Farms. They're over in Horn Lake. There's mm. a lot of just local companies, which to me just makes more sense. They're growing their seeds here. Some of the genetic genes are, you know, they're passed down. They get it from the soil, the weather. And so they build up a resistance to, oh, the rain, or that's what you hope anyway. And the information that's on the packs too, like what you're saying. Yeah, is, absolutely. It's so different if you were somewhere else, because a lot of seed companies can provide so much information that you basically just follow what they say and you're good to go on most years, right? But if you're following it from Ontario or something, you're going to be planting it totally at the wrong time and lose your plants. Exactly, exactly. And one of the things here too that you want to look at is some of the disease resistance of the types of plants because on the west coast we have a lot of, they're more um, fungal diseases that we have because it's so wet and moist.
So when a seed is open pollinated, that means that it has the potential that you can save the seeds. Like plants that are not open pollinated are... Oh, I'm going brain dead. <laughs> this is why I need my notes. Um, yeah, because you've got your F1 versions and your open pollinated, but you need the open pollination for seed saving. It just... Yeah, and a lot of your lettuces, um, beans are all open. Beans, super easy to save. Mm -hmm. Lettuce seeds, super easy to save. Like, but there's things that are trickier, like squash, because things will cross pollinate. Mm -hmm. And you can end up with some of the most entertaining looking zucchinis, squashes, pumpkin mm -hmm. hybrids, and you just go, mm -hmm. oh, I thought I was, <coughs> was going to get a green zucchini, not this orange speckled very strangely <laughs> shaped ginormous zucchini so so and when it comes to things like that you're best off just growing one variety or you really need to have a large acreage where you can space you know your acorn squashes over here your gooseneck squash over here because um, otherwise it won't will not be true to see So, um, and then the big kind of buzzword is everybody wants heirloom, heirloom tomatoes, heirloom this, and just something that I've noticed, yes, your flavor is, is there. The flavor of the heirlooms is amazing, but the actual quantity that you get from a lot of these plants is really low. Like there's, there's. There's a reason why we have hybrid seeds, right? Because we want the best traits of, of certain things. So, and I, I grow lots of heirloom things, but I find, <coughs> I find I have some standards, some things that have been bred over time that I'm just thrilled, thrilled with. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Um, it it depends like it really depends in terms like like with tomatoes some of the heirlooms like the ones that i find come out of russia or siberia they have similar growing conditions to what we have mm -hmm. and they have mm -hmm. really cool <laughs> yeah. they usually do quite well here mm -hmm. and the seeds are are quite easy to to save um if something in your catalog says AAS winner, does anybody know what that stands for? Your American Standard Winner. These are your tried and true varieties. If you're really overwhelmed and going, uh, which type of zucchini should I get? Which chard should I get? Well, your Bright Lights chard, which to me is the most beautiful. You get the mm. full array of colors and it's a proven AAS winner. I think since the 1930s or something. Um, it's it's great it it continually exceeds or meets expectations um some of the other ones are yeah um spinach bloomsdale spinach does really well and there's so so tried and true seeds are always always good to look to look Um, and then also on your little seed packets, Thank it'll you. say days to maturity. So, cause you go, but what you don't know sometimes is that days to maturity can mean once the seed has actually germinated, mm -hmm. carrots can take up to three weeks to germinate. Yeah. Right. And then you're like, well, they should be ready now. <coughs> Why aren't they? Well, they're not ready yet because the germination or the days to maturity was from when it actually germinated and when you saw it. A lot of tomatoes, it's from the time you actually transplant them into the ground. So it's not taking into account the six weeks that it takes you from starting your seed to maybe having it in the right, um, the right size that you're planting it into the ground. So those are just important little things to just be cognizant of when you're you're going, oh, this is awesome. My my garden's gonna be looking so good mid-June. And then it's like, 
Where are, are they? they? <laughs> Where is everything? Why am I still having to like go to the grocery store? This is ridiculous. <laughs> so. And also to point out, which I've made the mistake of, is that when they talk about days to maturity, they're almost always referring to spring planting. And a spring planting that is happening, say, in a week or two, is, cro is taking up, let's say it's a two month, that is crossing the longest days of the whole year. Right, so planting right now where the daylight is really long is not the same as planting mm. in the middle of August and expecting it to do 60 days later to the mm. middle of October. You should expect 70 or 75 days. So you have yeah. to take that into consideration mm. is that it's based on day length, light. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because I've done that, I've been like, okay, 60 days, here's my frost on October mm -hmm. 15th, go back to August 15th, plant. And it's like, no, you would have needed 75 or 80 days because you're, you're yeah. getting each day you know seven minutes less light and so it's actually you need to give way more days to it so that's mm -hmm. something to keep in mind when you read the pack it's talking about planting now things like like your your peppers your peppers and eggplants there's a reason why if you plant the the mini peppers or your mm -hmm. like your long fingerling eggplants or your little tiny twinkle eggplants you're gonna get quite a lot as opposed to like the bigger eggplants mm -hmm. which by the time it's warm enough to set them outside in your garden again the daylights hours mm -hmm. are less mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah and then there's also your vegetables that are daylight depend like your onions you know as soon <coughs> as we hit that um our days are getting shorter well suddenly they're like okay now it's time to start bulbing up or sending up our flower so so there's all these interesting things because if you start planting your onions you know the end of june <laughs> well or your sets the end of june they're like we've already had our solstice it's already gone right so so it's you can trick them <laughs> you can trick them but it's it's you know timing is super important here, I feel behind right now, but that's okay. That's okay. Things still grow. They might just be a little smaller than you expect, or, you know, you might have a lot of green tomatoes at the end of the season that you have to, you know, put on newspaper above your cupboards in your kitchen or in your garage, and it, the flavor's not quite the same, but mm. it's, it is still there. Potting soil, pretty straightforward. You buy it in a bag and typically it has most of, well, it'll also say what it's meant for, right? Like different potting <laughs> soils, good for different things. And then the variety, like the weight of the potting soil, cause they add a lot of vermiculite, like for, so it's lighter, but you gotta think about, okay, so what am I gonna be using this for? Like house plants, they wanna hold different type of soil if you're looking for things that have a certain amount of like they often have slow release uh, fertilizers in some of the soils but it'll say right on the bag you know what it contains and and you just go hmm here we use pro mix you buy it at Canadian Tire $29.99 cheapest place in Port Alberni to buy your pro mix and one bale does a whole lot of you can start a lot of seeds. I think it's like one around uh, from first using it to start your small trays and then potting them up all to the next size. I mm -hmm. think it's around 150, 175. Last year I tried to keep track of how much it was and it's about that many. So, so that's what you're doing. Oh, Mark, so, so you're so organized. <laughs> I don't know. I just, well, I just bought new last year and yeah. I grew about um, 350 seed, 300 seedlings approximately last year. And I went halfway through a second bag. Mm -hmm. So I kind of was doing the math and it's like around 200 you can get out of a bag approximately just so yeah. you know So it goes a long mm -hmm. way you buy them? Yes, And you can get smaller versions of yeah. these bags, yeah. but just it's hard to find here yeah. but. I love soil blocks, so I'm gonna just so we've got potting soil, you know you get it you put it in a tub you mix it you add water to it like don't just put your really fluffy potting soil into a tray seed it and then water it because chances are you've just 
watered your seed right out of the tray or well that's what has happened here so we like to get our potting soil like I just use a Rubbermaid bin and we get it to a nice kind of consistency where if you take it in your hand and go like this it kind of keeps you know you can make it a little warm in your hands and you go ah good and then we fill our trays Do you guys want to make a soil mix so yeah. we're actually moving around and not just sitting? Let's make some soil blocks. All right. Mm on the top you can't see it on this one because there was quite a large uh, pile here mm -hmm. then you lift it up mm -hmm. and you place it so these we built these so they could hold three so 36 per tray mm -hmm. and then you press down this is the fun part and pull up at the same time oh, and oh, then awesome. gently you want to lift it right up if you lift it off this way or that way. Well, they, now let's see. This is the magic card. Did it work? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. salt in the bottom of each hole and then I'm going to add three quarters of a cup of the Gaia Green organic fertilizer and I just put it in the hole and then I take my shovel and this is why I really like these ones because they're the perfect I do this not so great if you have carpal tunnel yeah. just telling you now and then sometimes I would soak this hole and you know give it a really good French beforehand but look our tomatoes have just had a really good French so we'll just ignore ignore that thing so these are red zebras and so I just take my plant set my fingers upside down and you hope it comes out my roots don't look too tangled so I don't need to tickle it or anything like that and then just so you see how deep that is down there it's quite a deep hole but this greenhouse can get i've arrived here at eight o'clock in the morning to open it up and it's been 45 degrees in here so i like to make sure they have the best chance of making it so and that is pretty much all i do 